What's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to spool up your line. Um, I bought a rod yesterday for those following me on my Instagram or Facebook. Uh, I got a new rod for myself and for Carlitos. Um, I wanna start doing um, cut bait. So with cut bait, you have to like kind of launch that bait out further, which means longer rods. Uh, so right now what I have, these are kind of old rods, but these are my Abu Garcia's. They're like on eight foot poles. Um, but that mono that's on there has been there since forever. And then this is the new one we got for Carlitos. So what I want to do is re-spool it with some new line. Now they say you're supposed to like change it out every year. I don't ever change out it every year. Uh, what I usually do is I'll pull some of the line out and if it comes off and it's still curly, it develops a memory, then that's when I know to go ahead and replace it. So we're going to head inside. Um, there's two types of spools. Uh, I'm going to show you those here in a second, um, but kind of show you the tips that I have that help you spool out new line. Um, I know whenever you buy poles at the store, it already has line on them. I never leave that line on there. I always replace it. So this is going to be kind of a how to um, with braid uh, that we bought with the two different types of spools. We'll do his spinning rod and then we'll do my bait casting one as well. They're a little bit different, but there's a couple of things you need to know when you do it. So, okay, give me one second. Let me go inside real quick, right back. Okay, so real quick, before I start spooling it up, let me, let me show you the difference that I'm trying to, that I'm trying to show you. So if you look at that spool, that barrel is metal, right? Nothing, but it's got some lines in there, but they're smooth. There's no, there's nothing to grip. I mean, it's just, Anyway, it's just a metal spool. Uh, now, if you look at my son's, the new one, hopefully it shows up in the light. You see that red right in the middle? That's like um, a rubber insert. And what that does is it actually grips the line that you're gonna tie onto it. So, and I'll show you here in a second why that's important. But like I said, there are two differences. It doesn't matter, either way you can still do it. This one is usually just a little bit easier. So give me one second, we'll get set up. So whenever you go to go ahead and, and add your line in, make sure you go through one of your rod guides. You don't have to go through the whole thing. Uh, by whole thing, I mean all the way to the tip. You don't have to do that. Um, it just really depends. I really don't go through all of them. I'll go through a few of them, but at least go through that first one. When you go through the first one, you make a knot. Like I said, make sure this is open. And you're gonna put that right on top of that red insert. Give yourself some slack. Uh, basically a longer tag line, which is the end. So you have something to grab onto. And then you're gonna go ahead and tie it again. And then cinch it down right on top of that little red area. Go over to give it real, since this is braided, it's not gonna split. If you're doing this with the mono, you gotta be careful. Cinch it up real good. So it doesn't have to be necessarily right in the middle, but as long as it's on the red, that's what'll hold it down. And then from there, you just trim it up. There you go. Okay, so now you have your spool, your bail is open. So you'll go ahead and close your bail. And then now it's gonna go into here. The bitty roller is what's gonna go ahead and guide that line onto your spool. Okay, so now you have your line on your spool. You're ready to start reeling it in and adding it on there. But what you wanna do when you first start out, you wanna have some tension on this line. If you just reel it in like that, it's gonna be very loose. Loose line on a spool isn't a good thing. You wanna have it tight. So there are a couple ways to do it. Um, what you can do is just pinch the line between your fingers and then reel in. But then if you're reeling in 100, 150 yards of line, after a while, it's gonna start digging into you. Plus you're gonna get, if you have colored line, it's gonna get all that dye on your fingers. So what I usually do is I'll go ahead and get a napkin, fold it up a little bit, pinch that between the line, okay? So now the pressure is not gonna come from you pinching it, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna use three fingers and pinch it this way. That way the line has to go through your fingers. So whenever you pinch it, the harder you pinch it, the more tension you have. And you have direct control over how much tension by how far you squeeze in. If it's just like this, it's not much. If you go like this, that's a lot of tension. But tension is a good thing. So like I said, you'll start reeling it in and then atten and put your tension, tighten your drag, and then you'll reel it in. So you'll do this the whole ways. Now we have about 150, I think, yards worth on this spool. So we'll go ahead and fast forward because you don't need to see all that. Okay, so 
we have it spooled up pretty good, if you can see from there. You don't want to go all the way to the end because you're going to have line coming off of it, and you don't want that. So leave a little bit of space, right, so that you have plenty of room right here. Um, and then so if you look at it, like I said, I mean, you'd get all that red stuff on your, on your fingers, but not only that, I mean, it would cut into your fingers too. So it's always better just to go ahead, in my opinion, just go ahead and use a napkin. That way you don't have to worry about nothing. So then once you do that, trim your line. Um, and then from there, so this is a line keeper. I'm surprised my son didn't know that when we went fishing the other day. So what you do is you take that and you wrap it under that keeper. If I could do it with one hand, two hands, and then pull it up. So like that, it holds onto your line. You don't have to, sometimes I'll actually, more than, I usually just tie it off right here, which is what that's for. Um, if I don't have one of these on my rod, then I'll just tie it off at the top here. So anyway, that's how you do the spinning rod. Super easy. I'm gonna show you the casting one. That one's a bit difficult, and you'll see why here in a second. Okay, so now we're gonna do the casting rod. So uh, you remember with the spinning rod, I said you had to have your bail open. So for this one, one thing you have to keep in mind is this guide. What it does is when you're reeling in your line, it's going back and forth. So it's laying that line across your spool as you reel it in. You have to make sure that your line goes through there, right? Once you go through there, it's gonna go under the spool. Okay, it's coming up. Okay, so now you have it here. So you can't tie it like that. So what you'll do is you'll grab some of the line from the front and pull it out. If you can see that, turn it this way. So it's going this way. So from there, you'll go ahead and tie it as you normally would with that double knot like we did before. So since this one does not, sorry, since this one does not have that rubber in the middle, this is a little trickier. So there's my one knot, and you wanna push it in as far as you can. Don't pull it, cause it'll pull it off that spool like that. So get it as close as you can, and get your second knot. And you wanna push it in there just like that with your fingers. Cause you want that knot to be as close as you can. So if I pull now, it's gonna pull my knot away from the spool, right? So what I'll do, feed it back through the bottom. So when I'm pulling, I'm pulling in opposite directions, if that makes any sense. And I can use my thumb, so I wanna get it as tight on that spool as I can. You see how I did that? So the thing with braid, it doesn't stretch, right? It keeps its memory. So if you're not, and now you can go ahead and, this is my tag end, now you can pull it through with the front. So with that knot, if the knot you tied in there isn't tight, when you go to reel, this will just spin. It'll just spin on there and then you're like, what am I supposed to do now? What some people do is they'll leave the mono on there, the mono filament, because the mono has some stretch to it. So when you tie a tight knot, it's gonna provide tension on that spool and that'll keep it from spinning. If you don't have that, like I don't like doing it myself. I don't like having mono and then tying it off into braid and all that stuff. I'll do it like this. If this knot isn't tight enough, what you can do is I've seen this before and I've done it before, and it sounds weird, you take some black tape, any kind of tape really, so we've got some tape. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna put some tape right on that spool, just like that. So if you see, excuse that, you have your line and then you have that tape. That tape is gonna keep it from spinning. What you wanna do is you want it to sit there while you tighten up. In other words, once it starts to tighten, you can put more and more tension on it until eventually you're pulling it like crazy. So from here, so I'm grabbing the front of it. So if you look, let's see if I can tilt it for you. So there's my line, so now I'm going, so I'm putting tension with my fingers because I'm not gonna do this the whole time. So just for the few, actually let me grab my napkin, that way you can, I can put more tension on it. Give me one second. Okay, so I have my napkin, same as we did before. So what I'm doing, I'm squeezing with the other hand while that tension is being put on that spool. Once I've gone through a few times, then it's gonna be fine, you can let it go. That tape, the harder you pull now, the more tension you put on it now, you see how loose that is? The more tension you put on it now, that's actually gonna hold that tape down. So it's gonna even hold it even firmer. So now I'm squeezing as hard as I can. And now it's laying it on there. So like I said, I just tension with my fingers 
So once you've covered up that black tape, then it's solid. It's not gonna go anywhere. This line that's on top of the tape is gonna keep that from moving. So it's really just the initial couple of turns that you need to have that most tension on. What you're gonna do, you're gonna take a pencil, push it right through the middle of the spool like that, okay? So now you have your spool with a pencil through it. Just like that, right? So there's one key thing that you need when you do this, okay? Now there's two different ways. This is the new way that I'm doing it. This is what you need uh, to put proper tension on your line. Crocs. <laughs> you laugh, right? But I'm serious. Look, I saw this the other day and I tried it out and it works. So what you're gonna do, don't laugh, is you're gonna go ahead, Crocs have these holes in them, right? You're gonna put these into the holes in the Crocs. See that? Boom, boom. So now, don't laugh, I said, don't laugh at my Crocs. Instead of applying tension with your fingers on the, uh, the line itself, the tension is gonna be applied by you pushing down or lifting up on that spool. So you can do this in carpet or you can do it in the grass. Totally up to you. Usually when I'm doing it, I'm sitting in front of the television watching TV. So that tension is basically from the friction of that spool against the carpet. See, I'm pushing down hard and I, I can barely move it. Or I lift it up and it comes off like, like nothing. So that's how you do it. And I know before I would use my fingers and that would be enough tension for me. And I saw one person do this. I was like, let me give this a try. Sure enough, it works. And it, it gives you your, your hands free. So I don't know if you saw when I was spooling up that spinning rod, it's kind of like wobbling on me because I'm trying to put tension and turn at the same time. This way you're using your feet for the tension and then you're just using your hand to hold the pole and to reel it in. It's the best, easiest and quickest way, okay? Give me one second and I'll get you set up so you can see how I'm doing it, okay? One second, don't laugh. Okay, so I'm ready to go. So like I said, you don't have to pinch your rod, the line up here. All that tension is being placed by your feet, right? The harder you push down, the more tension there is. So what you'll do is you'll start reeling in. I'm gonna push down with my feet. And you can, I don't know if you can hear that, that's freaking tight. So I'll let up, I'll pull my feet a little bit, and then you can just start reeling it. And you can tell just by how hard it is to reel and how much tension you're putting on it. And you'll just do this the whole way. Okay, so if for some reason you don't have crops, there's another way to do this. What you're gonna wanna do is Pretend my hands are my feet. I'm not gonna take my Crocs off and show you my feet. That'd just be weird, okay? Maybe one of these days, if I have like an OnlyFans or something like that, <laughs> I'll hook you guys up. But pretend this is my foot, right? This is my big toe. What you'll do is you'll put that pencil between your big toe and then the one next to it, just like that. So that would be my feet. And then you would push up and down, like I said, uh, for whatever tension. This isn't as comfortable because as you can imagine, it kind of hurts your toes a little bit. So if you could do it with Crocs, that'd probably be the best way to do so it. We just finished spooling this up, like I said, just based on the tension you're putting. And we'll speed this up as well. So kind of like with that spinning rod, right? You don't want to fill the whole thing up with line. So if you see, there's the end of my barrel right here. There's the line. Don't go all the way to the top because you don't want it spilling into there. So I'd maybe say about halfway between where I'm at and, and the very the very top of the spool right here. So we'll keep going just a little bit more. Okay, so I think we're good. So if you look at it, you know, it's not all the way to the top. I still have room right there. So that's good. Um, from here, as you can see, there's, oh, there's my loop right there. So what I'll do is I'll cut this off, tie it to that loop, and we should be good to go. Okay, everybody, that should do it for now. You saw me do the casting reel, bait casting. Placao is done. You saw me do the spinning rod, which seems like a lot easier. Like I said, if, if you have a rod or reel with that rubber insert, it makes it a lot easier to actually tie it off at the very beginning. So, sorry for that noise, that was my door. So, that's how I do it. There's plenty of other ways to do it. You're gonna see other videos on YouTube on how to spool your line. That's the way I do it. That's always been the easiest and best for me. Um, hopefully, when you go to do yours, it'll help you out. Um, so now we have these two. I do have one other one that I just bought, which is, yeah, I got a bunch of them. This little bad boy right here. What's up? So yeah, I do have a bunch of fishing rods 
my wife was like, why do you need so many? It's like, because each one, look at it, it's falling. Each one has their own purpose. Like those three, those are the ones I used when I went ice fishing. Some of those were from a long time ago. Those are my daughters. So yeah, I got a bunch of them, but then a lot of people do, right? Some people are like guns, have a bunch of guns. It's like, why do you need so many guns? It's because we do. Sorry for the glare. So hopefully that explains um, how I spool up my lines. If you have any other questions about it, uh, leave me a comment. Um, if you're going out fishing to any of the places that I've listed before or just in your hometown, you want to share some pictures, send them to me. I'll see if I can post them up here as well. I'll see if I can put a link for an email uh, down below. Send them to me. I'd love to see them. You know, seeing you guys with your family or just out there by yourself, sometimes that's even more fun. Um, so then give me a like, subscribe. If you can, click that bell notification uh, so you'll get notified when I do post more videos. I'm going to try and go out here in a couple days. I'll fish with some minnows. I haven't done it yet, which was kind of weird. I thought I would have by now, but I guess I haven't. So we'll do that. So until I see you then, God bless.